Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Black Shirt Breakdown. My name is Steve Mark. I'm a staff writer at Inside Nebraska, and he is the Jay Foreman, our NFL veteran and former Nebraska Black Shirt. Jay, we are back again to break down another uh, Husker recruit in the 2024 football class, and he is Carlin Jones, a six foot three, 290 pound defensive lineman out of Bay City, Texas. Now, if Husker fans recognize the the town of Bay City in Texas, that is because a 2023 recruit, Bryce Turner, a wide receiver, is also from Bay City. Um, so the Huskers kind of dip in twice into Bay City, Texas, and they get a really interesting defensive line recruit, a guy that I think um, to- uh, Terrence Knighton, the defensive line coach, is going to be really excited to get his hands on and try to mold over these uh, next few years once he gets to Lincoln next year. But, um, Jay, when, when Carlin Jones' name – uh, came across the timeline for you. Uh, you you obviously watched his highlights. You read up on him. What were your overall reactions to Carlin Jones, a three star defensive lineman out of Bay City? Well, for a big kid, you know he's got a he, he's got a little wiggle to him, and he can yep. kind of you know s- you know s- slip through some cracks. And he's got a, a as we're going to see in his video. Um, you know, I know it's four or five plays, but he shows a, a variety of pass rush moves. Um, I, the first thing I look for in defense alignment or skill position is to make sure that they look like whatever their listed height and weight are and, and how they look, you know, in particularly, obviously we've, you know, had some issues with that, you know, in the past and past staffs, but he's a legit, uh, you know, 280, 290, 63. You can tell that plays with good power and good leverage, which is obviously I think is huge. Um, good quicks off the line of scrimmage. And, you know, he's got longer arms, you know, it, as you'll see in a play here where he's able to walk some guys back and he's got good functional strength. So, um, so he popped off and, and, you know, as far as them going down to Bay city, uh, not once, but twice. And that's usually what they do. You know, I mean, what good coaches and good recruiters do is they'll go and say they're at one high school, they hear about another player, they'll ask coaches. I mean, coaches are going to definitely tell you, especially if you're recruiting, you know, one of the players in Turner, they say, Hey, look, you know, there's another guy that, you know, Carlin Jones, you might want to look at, he's an up and coming kid, or he's a, you know, future power five kid, go check him out. And that's how you get, you know, make it more efficient. And, um, you know, and I think it also helps out when you're recruiting kids from the same area. Uh, there's a good chance that they know each other. They mm-hmm. can go through the process of adjusting to college football and adjusting to Nebraska together. So I think it's a smart move, and he fits what, you know, Tony White's going to do on this defense. He's got enough quickness to kind of do the slants and stunts and stuff like that. But, mm-hmm. uh, you know, from a high school level, it looks like he has enough functional strength to coo- – to, uh, do you know you know anything with power and stuff like that so you know i'm sure they're excited and he seems like he's pretty excited to get up here to nebraska absolutely and he has one heck of a stat line for a junior uh his junior season 102 tackles jay 102 for a defensive lineman you don't really see that sometimes especially for an interior guy um but 29 tackles for loss 13 of them were sacks so he had 13 sacks uh as a junior that's really cool stuff and you mentioned the recruiting part this is a big recruiting win because a lot of interesting programs, good programs wanted them some Carlin Jones. So after he visited Nebraska on through the June uh, second and third weekend, he also visited TCU kind of a big deal. Oklahoma right. state, another good program, California and Georgia tech. So those, right. those, those are, those are, it's a big uh, recruiting win for, for Nebraska here. And you know what we uh, here at inside Nebraska, we called, um, Carlin up after he uh, committed and uh, he he told me what he thought about Nebraska and it was all positive. And then when I got to asking him about Matt Rule, his thoughts on Matt Rule, I thought his his uh, quote here was really kind of cool. He said, quote, this is just a powerful person in regards to Matt Rule. He literally has airlines connected to where he's going to go. They have a whole new coaching staff. And because they haven't been winning much, I feel like I can be a part of change. So, Jay, when you hear a quote like that from Carlin Jones, going to be a right. senior in high school at Bay City, um, what what do you think? We also we all um, know about Matt Rule and the Redway airline that he had has with a lot of direct flights to key recruiting uh, bases right. across the country. Yeah. So, uh, what do you what do you think about that quote from Carlin? Man, I think you know it's a recruiting tool. I mean, it's just yeah. perfect timing. I don't know if it was before Matt Rule, you know, officially became head coach. You know, I'm assuming those things were in the works, and it would have helped any coach. But you know, Matt Rule is a benefit of, or is a benefactor of that, in the sense that you're able to get you know people in and out of Lincoln from bigger cities on a consistent basis. It helps obviously the economy in Lincoln, but more importantly, we're talking about football. It helps out the football program as far as getting parents and family and friends into town yep. uh, to games. 
and then also helps in recruiting. And also, so, you know, you don't have to think about, oh, I got to fly into Omaha and drive, you know? And so mm -hmm. in his case, Bay City, Texas, or if you're from like a little bit of outside of, you know, Dallas, or even, you know, in my case, Minneapolis or something like that, you can go to a big international airport, get right into Lincoln, and then you, you know, get them quicker to the stadium. So then therefore you're able to maximize your time with them and ultimately, you know, recruit more, re recruit more efficient, which we've seen right here. They got two kids out of Bay City. It's something that they're talking to kids about. So maybe that's something that they knew going into Texas, going into other states that that might be a negative recruiting tool that other schools are saying, right? Yeah. Well, now that's alleviated. And then that allows Matt Rule and, and, and staff to really recruit these guys and get them to see the benefits of coming here to Nebraska. And the biggest thing I like from him is he like he, he wants to be part of a change, right? So yeah. that lets me know he can see beyond himself, right? So the easy choice would be, hey, let's go to the school that had a, a historical year in TCU, way out of the norm for TCU with a first-year head coach. There's no guarantee that they're going to be good this year. But he looked at what is beneficial to him, Matt Rule, being a new kid coach, his track record, being able to get the Lincoln and also being a, uh, wanting to be a part of the, you know, foundation of turning this thing around. So Jay, before we get into these, one more question before we get into these uh, highlights of Carlin Jones, there's obviously, obviously going to be a change with the defense three three five defense that Tony White is bringing in. What are the differences? What are the major differences between a three three five defensive lineman and what Nebraska's defensive linemen were asked to do last year under Eric Shenander and, and Bill Bush after that? Yeah, well, I think, well, the first of all, there's a big difference between Shenander and, and Bill Bush just to start out. But I think just in, in the basis, just taking, forget who's calling the plays. Mm -hmm. A three, a three, four defensive lineman, usually two gaps. So they, you know, Nebraska had their, you know, have a guy over the center and two guys, you know, head up to inside shade on the tackle. So they're usually trying to read, you know, the guard and tackles position, essentially creating a wall at the line of scrimmage, mm -hmm. right? And, and you know, originally, essentially, you have your linebackers and your defense line fit, and it's just a wall. It's kind of like an old New England Patriots type of, of defense. And sometimes, you know, got, you know might have got a little bit confusing. confusing. Now with Tony White, he's running a 3-3-5, three, three, and you still have three D linemen down, right? And you might, mm -hmm. you know, have a MJ Sherman or Jamari Butler, a guy, other guy there, but – they're what they're doing they're a little bit on the move and so they're trying to reestablish the line of scrimmage to the play side of the of the play right and so um you know you have to be very good at you know you have to be active as a defensive lineman you have to play with good leverage and you got to be able to play with some stamina and so when you think of carlin jones right for the, for have over 100 tackles at a, yep. as a defensive lineman mm -hmm. that's letting you know that he is playing with extreme effort you just don't fall into a, a, a tackle 100 times in a high school game have 29 tackles for loss, along with 13 sacks, essentially in knowing everybody's gunning for you. So you know he's a pretty active player, so he fits right into the 3-3-5. But the main differences are two-gap versus one-gap. And in, in, in Tony White has the ability to two-gap if he needs to. Mm -hmm. And in an and in the old defense, they, ran, they got upfield a little bit. But I think Carlin Jones fits into uh, the 3-3-5 uh, you know, pretty easily. Absolutely. And I love the word that you use to describe him active. Carlin Jones is active. You you watch his burst, his get off on the line of scrimmage, uh, the way he bats down offensive linemen's hands. Um, he It's just he's moving a lot and he's quick for a big guy. And I really like that. And I think Husker fans are really going to like that. Terrence Knighton going to like that. Well, yeah, sure. I mean, look, I mean, he's got good long levers right there, right? He had a, he gave him a Euro step there for your basketball fans right here, right? Where you give him, you know, inside fake. And then you swim him tight and look at the leverage that when he gets around this offensive lineman, I always say, you don't want to be a bobber. If you, I love the fish. So I kind of always kind of use analogies of what I like to do, but see like right there, you see how he's at, at pad level right there. Yeah. He saw the head dip. Right. And so what I call that is an offensive lineman, a waist bender instead of a knee bender. And then I like that he's able to finish right long guy. He's look at the, when, I, when you watch him in his stance, look at the long arms, mm -hmm. long legs. So right there, and look at he's getting off pretty good. He's reading the offensive lineman. Once he sees that head down, he knows he's slipping him right here, he's getting off, and Terrence Knighton is going to work, work with him on the downward swipe so it gets him right into that quarterback and maybe get that forced fumble. But I like guys that can finish. And the thing is with him, he has long arms, so he's able to get guys from a little bit farther away. And you see it right here. This is what I really like right here, right? He's getting off on the ball. And he's just walking the guy back, right? That's what you want. When I talked about having long arms and playing with good leverage, 
this is a perfect example right here. Now, granted, he's bigger and stronger than this guy, but you can't you can't dictate who you play against. Yeah. Right. Where he's able to take the center and walk him right back and just destroy the whole play. Right. Look at this. He's he's this is the trifecta right here. Right. You beat you defeat the block. You blow the whole play up. You get a I don't know if this is a sack or tackle for loss. It just looked like the quarterback just looked, looked like he saw the boogeyman. Well, it's yeah. a sack right here. And it's a sack tackle for loss and almost a, a forced fumble if the ref would have let it, you know, keep going. So, look, when you are a power five recruit, every team is gunning for you. They're, they, they're, he's number one on their scouting report, and mm -hmm. he's still producing. And, uh, you know, also another thing I like about it, Steve, is that the first play, we saw him playing more of a three technique. Yeah. This one is a little bit over the like shaded nose. So when you think about mm -hmm. the transition in the college and what he's going to have to do, we're, you can think about second and third down, right? First down, if you want to say that's a three, three, five, that's fine. First and second or second and third down is a lot of nickel. This gives you flexibility. Now, look, well, I'm not saying that he's coming right from Bay City, Texas to starting in, you know, Memorial Stadium. But what I'm saying is what he's doing now is going to hopefully allow his transition into Based from base defense to nickel, dime, and specialty packages uh, quicker because he's done it in high school, um, and uh, you know he's been pretty effective. And then another one, it looks like he's on the outside shoulder of the right guard here again. Flexibility, yeah. and when we talk about uh, Ter uh, Terrence Knight and what he's asking his D lineman to do, and Tony White, they're going to play all over. They're going to play multiple techniques along the D, the D line and and just um, see what see what guys are good at, and hopefully you know during a game that's where a lot of confusion with the offensive line comes in. And that's kind of a product of the three, three, five, right. Confusion with the offensive right. lines blocking assignments. Well, yeah. I mean, you want to be able to win, you know, one-on-one -on -one battles and, and, and be able to get on the move and, and be active. And you see the swim move right here, yeah. right. Again, he's able to get off the ball and read these offensive linemen, but here's what's even better. You know, Steve, where, where people are missing, right. He's from Bay city, Texas, but you look at all the people on the sidelines got sweatshirts on. So he's a Bay City, Texas kid playing in the cold weather. So that means yeah. he can play in Nebraska. I mean, I, I look, I'm a student eye for football. I'm looking at every everything to evaluate the player. But you know, back to his playing playing or to the play right here is what you like is here. Look, if you dip your head, he's got enough quickness, right? Enough quickness to get off the ball. Watch this right here. He's reading it and he's reading him real quick, right? Boom, get, right there. You've seen him lunging. By you, that's what you call him basketball. By you, right here, and he stays tight with it. See it where was when his arm wraps over, mm -hmm. right? He almost slaps him on the back right here, which then allows him to make the play, make the tackle for loss, right? So if he came out too wide and his arm actually crossed over from you know or the left side of his body, he would have been a little bit too wide, and they would have hit that run right up the middle. So when you see guys get penetration sometimes at the high school and college uh, level their leverage and how they play continue to play with good leverage after defeating the initial block uh, really allows them to make the play or takes them out of the play. Um, and, you know, this must've been something that he picked up on in this right guard. Yeah. It's the same this, right guard. <laughs> right. It's, it's the same swim move, but look at his leverage again, right? Mm -hmm. Gets up, finds the ball. Another one, we're looking two plays, two of his 29 tackle for losses. Look how he comes over right here. He's reading the offensive lineman, but he's already reading in the backfield. So you talk about running backs always looking at, but they don't have a, anybody account for Carlin Jones to defeat the play at the point of attack. And then he makes a backside because he's, you know, pretty dominant player. But what mm -hmm. the most impressive thing with me is for him to make the play and then be able to what I, what they call in defense is get down the line and make and make the tackle for loss. So I could also equate and maybe um assume that if they ran some sort of jailbreak boundary screen out there towards the 50 that even if he had that same defeated that block the same way he's able to be out of the stack as they say d lineman chasing and tackle receiver or running back or a specialty uh player that they bring in so you know his tape for his size um and his and, and being as active ha as he is you see why you had you know the, the the number two team in the nation recruit him and obviously offer him and try to bring him in. You, you mm -hmm. know why uh, uh, Gundy wanted him as well, Oklahoma State, and they've done well in Texas recruiting players. Mm -hmm. And then obviously you see why Nebraska, Cal, and Georgia Tech wanted him as well. He fits their defensive scheme, and uh, he's a very productive player in high school, and he's probably going to have another you know great senior year. And uh, because the things that he, do, he does will always lead to production, right? Hands, leverage active and wants to be better you can tell he loves football there's mm -hmm. no doubt about it it just jumps off the screen um so i think you know tony white and um 
you know, uh, pot, you know, pot roast are pretty, pretty, uh, Terrence Knight is pretty excited to get somebody in there that's active and has a good foundation of how to play defense online, right? Doing multiple things. Um, and then, but the biggest traits that he has is his size. I feel you. I like his size. I like his length, both of, you know, his legs and his arms. Um, and you know, he's active, his effort and his playmaking ability. So those are all the things that Terrence Knighton is going to be able to start with that he doesn't have to teach or train to, which is going to allow hopefully his development to be quicker than, uh, uh, most people. Excellent stuff as always, Jay, um, really had fun breaking down Carlin Jones. So, um, for everybody at home, that was Carlin Jones, a three-star defensive lineman out of Bay city, Texas. He's one of seven Texans in the Huskers class of 2024 so they are heading to the lone star state and i think a lot of football fans in this state like that a lot so jay thank you so much i am steve mark he is jay foreman and that was a black shirt breakdown carlin jones edition we will catch y'all later